Hey, you guys, Dr. Nicole here. Wanted to talk to you today about endometriosis. Um, endometriosis is a actually quite common condition in women. Up to one in 10 women have endometriosis. Um, and it is a pelvic pain condition where endometrial-like tissue grows actually outside of the uterus and can actually cause quite a bit of um, inflammation, scar tissue, um, and can actually produce quite a bit of pain um, and also include things like abdominal bloating, um, constipation, um, pain just with menstruation, painful intercourse, um, and a whole slew of other symptoms. One of the things that's not talked about a ton, um, but it's starting to get a little bit more attention is actually that because endo is an inflammatory condition of the pelvis, um, a lot of times the pelvic floor muscles in return sort of go into this uh, holding pattern or fear or protect mode to try to help what's going on in the abdominal area and pelvic cavity. And what that can do is that that can start to create symptoms themselves, right? So the pelvic floor is anything here that you see in red. It is involved with urination, intercourse, and around the vaginal canal, and then also around the rectal canal. And because our organs sit in here and actually sit on the literal floor of the pelvis, anytime that these muscles can get irritated or um, mad, as sometimes I like to say, then the, then the um, pelvic floor can also start to generate its own symptoms. So symptoms of pelvic floor dysfunction, ironically, can mimic a lot of endometriosis-like pain and symptoms. And what's interesting about endometriosis is that the, we've, what we found in the literature is that the stage of endometriosis has no actual correlation to the severity of the disease in terms of pain. So, right, so you can have stage one endometriosis with a significant amount of pain, or you can have stage four endometrio endo endometriosis with almost no pain. So there's not really any rhyme or reason that correlates your symptom presentation with the severity of the disease process going on. So, but we all know that most people with endo have some sort of abdominal and pelvic pain associated with their symptoms, whether they're cyclical or pretty constant, um, no matter the time in the cycle. So because, you know, remember that it's not just about pain with menstruation that that is endo symptoms, right? There's a ton of other things that go on and constant abdominal pain is one of those things. So if we think about what's actually going on with um, anywhere around this pelvic cavity, right? Where this, some of this endometrial like tissue sort of goes around and can sort of irritate some of these areas, we actually have um, an a thing where some of the pelvic floor muscles start to protect as well as some of the abdominal muscles. And so the abdominal muscles can also create a ton of pain. So there was a study that showed that over 90% of people with endometriosis actually had abdominal tender and trigger points that were actually quite painful to touch and were actually generating some of the pain that they were talking about could also, about 70% of people with endo also have pelvic floor dysfunction. And if you put that all into, into one pile where we have now symptom generators that could potentially be the pelvic floor, we have symptom generators that can be the organs themselves that are irritated from the inflammatory process going on from endo, and we have now the abdominal cavity and trigger point area um, that can also be driving some of those symptoms now all of a sudden we have a kind of trifecta of, of pain that can be had um, that isn't necessarily just from the disease process of endometriosis itself, right? It's from all of those other things that are your body's trying to do to protect that area. And so pelvic health physical therapy is really a great line of defense in symptom management from endometriosis. Um, it, we can help with abdominal bloating. We can help with um, constipation. We can help with abdominal pain. We can help with keeping you active and 
moving um, so we, where we can mitigate your symptoms as much as possible so that you can still reap the benefits of movement without causing you to go into a massive flare. That's really important. And so while pelvic floor physical therapy is not a cure for endometriosis in any way, we can really help to manage your symptoms and help you to know your body better so that you can build a as best of a foundation as you can for your pelvic health and your pelvic floor. And so we really also recommend, highly recommend that you look into very skilled, well-read, well-researched, well-versed, uh, um, and passionate OBGYNs that are specifically trained in excision surgery. Excision and ablation does not mean the same thing. Um, and so we need you to make sure you seek out a endometriosis surgeon that is trained in actually identifying endo from the surgical process. So the gold standard of actually um, treating endometriosis is this endometrio endometriosis excision surgery that really needs to be done by a skilled um, surgeon. So it's very important that you ask your surgeon, are they specifically trained in that? And how many people do they see um, a, a week, a month or whatever um, to make sure that you're getting somebody that really does this all the time? There's some really good resources out there for you for that. Nancy's Nook is a great place, informational resource for you to try to find good healthcare practitioners that um, are up to date on a lot of the research. Unfortunately, a lot of medical care practitioners are not. And so you need to really do your due diligence and make sure that you research the practitioners that you go to um, from a medical standpoint. Now, <clears throat> once you have endometriosis surgery, right, a laparoscopic um, excision surgery, then that in and of itself can create pain and inflammation, which is part of the normal post-surgical process. But that's where pelvic health physical therapists can come in again and make sure, just like in any other type of surgery, knee, hip, ankle, uh, shoulder, we can help to you to restore the normal movement and functions of the area that was surgically um, repaired or treated. And in this case, then it's the bowel, bladder, sexual functioning, and overall stability um, that your pelvic floor provides for your low back and your hips. So it's a really good um, area for you to also consider pelvic floor physical therapy after your endometriosal, endometriosis excision surgery as well. Um, because anytime we have a surgical insert to, insult to the body, we need a little bit of help um, with a skilled practitioner uh, in order to get you back functioning at the most optimal capacity that you possibly can. So please consider adding a pelvic floor physical therapist to your endometriosis team. And if we all work together, hopefully we can get you the best possible outcome with your endo.